Hey, welcome to another episode of Azure Unblocked. I'm here with Rene, who is the open source lead of Microsoft Western Europe, and we are going to talk about open source at Microsoft. So stay tuned. So hi, my name is Thomas Maurer and I'm here with Rene. And he, as I said, he is the open source lead uh, for Microsoft Western Europe. Um, so Rene, how are you doing? And can you explain me what your job is as open source lead? Of course I can. Uh, hi everybody, my name is uh, Rene Moldejonger and I'm responsible for open source within Western Europe. It's quite a big thing, it was, it's quite a broad thing obviously. Uh, and my role uh, involves it, I promote the OSS motions throughout our uh, sales motions uh, within the region. So that means on the migrate part, we support also the OSS motions focusing on, on uh, Linux, for instance, and OSS databases. And I also su uh, uh, support the innovate part where I'm working together with lots of colleagues. So somebody's owning the innovate motion over there, which talks about cloud native applications. So through all the region, I want to make sure that open source is an important topic. All right, that's, uh, that, to be honest, open source at Microsoft um, sounds like, I think for a lot of people still very, very strange and difficult. Um, but you also have that history, right? You're not like, this is not the first time you're in contact um, with open source technology. Uh, where have you worked before? What have you done before? I mean, my gray uh, beard actually tells that I have a little bit of history in, in, uh, in IT. Actually, uh, we, if, if I'm only going to focus on the OSS part, I started my career at Red Hat where uh, back in 2009 where I progressed my career over there and I started as a seller and I moved into leadership roles over there pushing the open source message. And back in 2009, there weren't a lot of companies using embracing open source to the extent that we see right now. So it was pretty appealing to be part of that organization at that point in time and see also the open source motion grow. Um, afterwards, I joined Microsoft. Uh, and then somebody stepped up and said, Rene, I'm setting up this company called Docker. Do you want to be part of this? So uh, I've been a year, I think almost two years out where I joined Docker also to set up Docker in the EMEA region that involves lots of travel, but also lots of evangelizing the whole container motion. So I'm, I was pretty happy to be part of that motion. And, uh, but then Microsoft came back and said, well, we have this position called open source, uh, open source lead also for Western Europe. Would you be interested? I applied, there were multiple candidates obviously, and I'm extremely happy that I got the job because I get to do what I do right now, is represent Microsoft and at the same time also represent this open source motion. Yeah, and to be honest, we are definitely happy to have you back here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, again, I wanna come back to this and, and ask you a little bit about the, the open, open source at Microsoft. And I know that a lot of people um, are gonna watch this and they're gonna say, hey, Microsoft is that company which is not really having that, rep still not having that reputation for doing an open source. And I know personally, and we talked about this, we are actually doing a lot in the open source field. Um, but can you a little bit explain and, and, and more how, especially also the history yeah. and, and how this new wave of uh, Microsoft basically started? Uh, I mean, there are a couple of ways, you know, to answer this question. We can take a look at the facts, and the facts I also talk about the number of contribution. We're part of, of multiple foundations. But what I did the last year, I've presented at lots of different forums, whether it was Red Hat or our open source forums, where I got to uh, also present the history of open source in combination with Microsoft. I don't want to spend too much time on all the details, but I think it basically all changed for the general audience when Satya came on board. And that's this famous picture with where Satya is explaining uh, IT and then suddenly this picture pops up, Microsoft loves Linux. To the external, comp to the external, external world, this was, this was like, hey, Microsoft and open source, what's going on? But I think Satya made a really important statement that, in that presentation. He said, judge us by the action we've taken in the recent past, our actions today and in the future. Actually meaning, of course we have a history and we will never, never neglect that history and we, we know where we're coming from. But at the same time, if you take a look at what we're doing, how we're embracing open source nowadays, uh, a couple of examples, of course, we did a DICE acquisition. There was a company, uh, Gabe Monroy was part of it, for instance. 
we acquired the company because of their Kubernetes skills and also the people in there. And the majority of the team actually stayed within Microsoft because they also were bought into the idea of, hey, Microsoft and open source, that is really a combination. Um, another example, and, and also a great example, is, is what we're doing has to do with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We're a big contributor also of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation where uh, lots of Microsoft people are also contributing. And not only that one, we have the Linux Foundation and there are multiple other examples where you can definitely see how we're, uh, how we're contributing. The, if I talk about open source strategy, there are a couple of parts where we are uh, focusing on. Of course, first it's, it's enabling uh, open source use cases in the cloud. To us, Azure is it's a big cloud. It's, it's a, it, we want to be the best cloud out in the world, and we want to make sure that we that, that we offer the best use case and, and the best also experience for our users. So that means we also enable these open source use cases, talking about Docker, talking about uh, Linux, uh, talking about Java, talking about all kinds of other technologies in there. So that's the first part, that's the enable part. On the integrate part, we want to make sure that we integrate open source technologies in our platform. A couple of examples are Hadoop, for instance, Spark, uh, there's MySQL, and there are multiple other technologies that we're making part also of our offerings. The third part is the release part. So it's not only, we want to make sure that we also give back. And what we're giving back is, uh, for instance, .NET Core Base has been open source, uh, PowerShell, and there are so many different other examples that I can think of that we also open source. Um, there's also this big patent, uh, uh, the Open Invention Network. And not a lot of people are aware of this, by the way, but we donated, I think, two billion worth of patents to this specific uh, open invention network community so they can leverage also this technology which is part of these patterns so i think that's also a good proof point where we are also releasing where we're also giving back to the community and the last part i already mentioned which is the release part we are uh, which is the contribute part we are contributing to all kinds of different communities including the ones we already mentioned uh, and last but not least in the old days I mean, uh, we're an open company. We want to make sure that we are an open company. There's this open source T-shirt and open at Microsoft in here. And what I mean by that, we want to make sure that we partner with the larger ecosystem. So we partner with Red Hat, we partner with SUSE, we partner with Canonical, we partner with Piv uh, no, Pivotal is not the right, uh, it's Tensu now nowadays, of course, Cloud uh, Redis Labs. So there are multiple partners that we want to make sure that we go to market with together that can offer their solutions on our platform. Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I'm really, really stunned by all the, all the work we are doing and all the different initiatives we have running. Right? For me, when I, 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 when I personally just look at, at what we did and what I saw, what we kind of like did in open source. I mean, I just had a very small view on, on what we're actually doing. Um, I, especially when we looked at, for me, it was always like the contribution. For example, we did on the Hyper-V kernel. Um, done by the Hyper-V yeah. team, for example, to make sure that um, Linux runs really, really well on Hyper-V, on our virtualization platform, but also then obviously on Azure as well, right? So just making, like, this is just one of the basic parts, right? This is one which probably was more for us than for others, but then we also, as you said, we, we, we shape a lot of other, like, things which to make other lives better, right? Yeah, and, and, and that's also, of course, we want to empower every individual and organization in the world to achieve more. And uh, the open and, and of course, I've added some words, the open source way. We, will, we want to make sure that we uh, that we include also the open source technology to the, to the same mission statement. And also what I mentioned in the, uh, the contribution part is really important to us. We do not want to only want to take stuff from the open source community. Now we want to make sure that we're part of it and that we that we give back to the community. So I think that's crucial. It's collaboration, it's sharing. Those are the foundation of open source, and we want to make sure that we live up to those. And if I take a look, I was talking about numbers a little bit. If I just share a couple of numbers of the number of contributions that we're making and the, and the numbers of commits that we're making, I think more than six thousand people are contribute Microsoft people I'm talking about, they're worth for, I think they're good for 2 million commits, OSS commits, whether that's part of the Linux uh, Linux project or, or other open source projects, it doesn't matter. I think that's quite uh, amazing already. And that number goes up significantly. So I think that's also something that we're, we're seeing right now. And uh, we don't develop stuff 
and throw it back over the wall. But we want to work together with the open source community. I think that's also a good statement to make. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm always impressed by these numbers. Uh, and and I, I really like what, what we are doing there. What what I also find very impressive and one of the numbers I, I was no, I know, I don't know how it is exactly right now, but I remember when, they, when we basically created PowerShell Core 6 and PowerShell 7, uh, they, the team made this like open source, right? And after a while, mm-hmm. Uh, there is this Power BI dashboard out there who shows the commits and contributions to PowerShell, for example. And we realized that like over 50% of uh, like contributions are coming from the community and not from Microsoft because like people yeah. are so excited about and they can actually help working on these products. And same thing with um, uh, like new things like the Winget client or the Windows terminal and all of that, those cool tools we release now yeah. as open source so people can actually contribute. Absolutely. I mean, the subsystem for Linux, of course, that's also something that you're involved in. I think there are so many things that we can share from that side. Um, and I think there are, the cool thing about open source is that there are less limitations whatsoever. I think the community is almost limitless. Um, the, 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 the sky is the limit. So you can do whatever makes sense. And um, the value that comes out of it is working the open source way. I think that's quite significant already. And um, the way that Microsoft is embracing that, I think is quite astonishing. And I'm really, really, really happy to have to, uh, the possibility to, to represent that motion. No, that's that's I, again. I'm I'm really excited about all these things happening. Um, another question I have, and obviously it's not just as you said, it's not just about Microsoft, and it's not just about what we do, and and all that, and not just about the community. But you also obviously we are collaborating with a lot of other companies, like let's say Suzy Canonical, and again you mentioned a couple of them before. How do you like feel about their like? Like, how do they think about Microsoft working with them? What is like their expectations? What, how do they feel about this situation? I think let's take one example. Let's take Red Hat. I mean, uh, when I was still part of Red Hat, collaborating together with Microsoft, I mean, they've been working together with us for over 10 years. But the last couple of years, you can see that collaboration being increased even more, despite the fact, of course, that they, 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 they were acquired by IBM. It's all about, you know, we still want to make sure that we put somebody on top of everything, which is the customer. And the customer expects also this integrated motion together that would, you know, they've got good solutions. We got a good, we got good solutions. They want to make sure that these integrated solutions have a good SLA and that they also have some support. So that's what we're doing, for instance, together with Red Hat, where we have joint engineering, joint support. And it's not only Red Hat, by the way, we, we offer the same also together with SUSE. But in case of Red Hat, we let me give you one example. We just released, last year was already released, but we just released the newest version of a product called Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which is an integrated solution uh, based on OpenShift technology, but it runs on Azure as a managed service. And all the work that has been going on behind the scenes, making sure that that is, um, that is really a well-integrated solution and also a really good experience for the end customer, that was something that we needed to be on top of. So all the R&D people were working together. Uh, all the commercial people are working together now to position this well together with the customers. Uh, the, support, uh, the, the support departments needed to be aligned so that we have this uh, you can call them and you don't know whether you got a, a Red Hat support engineer on the line or Microsoft. It doesn't matter. They're going to solve your issue. And I think that was practically nobody would have thought of that years and years and years ago. And that's something that we're executing as we speak. And that's only one example of many. And I think that's that's really uh, outstanding that we're seeing right now. Yeah. No, I, I, I couldn't agree with you uh, like more. Um, I, it's really fantastic to see where, where these partnerships are going. Also with the announcement, I think, especially uh, on the side we had with Azure Arc and the support for OpenShift, um, and then as well as on the Azure Stack side uh, and, and in the whole hybrid space we are in. No. Um, yeah. So just to, to wrap this up a little bit, um, so if I want to know more, if I'm now watching this video and if I want to know more about what is Microsoft doing in the open source space, um, where would I go? Where do you, would you recommend? Where can I find more about open source at Microsoft? 
I think there's that there's open at Microsoft, which is, is is a Twitter handle, but there's also a lot of information behind there. And also on the website, there are, there is a specific section also that talks about the collaboration that we have, for instance, with Red Hat, with SUSE, the general open source, uh, general open source uh, topics. If you have specific questions, always good to reach out to me. I mean, more than uh, more than happy. I will make sure to put my Twitter handle um, uh, also in the comments below. It's really easy. It's my last name, Modderjonge, so it's at Modderjonge, which is my Twitter handle. So ask me any questions you want. I will make sure to answer all of them. Um, yeah, and again, there. This whole open source motion, it's so evolving. Things are changing so much. I and mean, then you were talking about Azure Arc, and we had Scott Guthrie in um, in a keynote together with Red Hat CEO also to discuss, you know, the integration of Azure Arc in combination also together with, with OpenShift. And there are multiple other uh, uh, examples that we can think of. Stay stay tuned. I mean, that's basically the message. There's so much, much so, so much more we will share. And um, yeah, that also brings me to another subject that we briefly gonna handle. In order to promote this more, we're also setting up open source conferences. Um, and in case of what we're setting up now is we're setting up a virtual open source summit and we're going to have the first European edition uh, shortly. I think it's going to be less than a month. It's going to be the 16th of June. This is the first of many. So we expect to have more also in the next fiscal year. And that's a really good moment for yourself um, to get to get to know more what we offer when it comes to open source at Microsoft. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, I also saw that there is a amazing speaker list. Um, there you have people from, I think from Suzy, uh, but also even Microsoft. I think you have, will have Scott Hanselman um, and others, right? Yeah, I mean, that it all started pretty small to be really open with you guys. I mean, what we basically did is you have this guy, I have a dream. Hey, we had a dream here in Europe. We wanted to set up a really amazing open source summit. So it started small. What we ended up with, uh, up with is we're going to have 30 net new sessions. So that means 30 new recordings. So it's all going to be pre-recorded. We're going to have four different tracks. So it's going to be an infra track. And I know some guy in this call, Thomas, is also going to be part of that track. Uh, we're going to have an innovation track talking about cloud native. We're going to have a dedicated data and AI track talking about all the OSS database and all the difference. There's so much technology, uh, there's so much going on uh, on the innovation side in that track. So please also make sure to tune into that one. And the last one is a developer, developer track uh, where Scott Hansman is going to be. Uh, we're going to have two keynotes. We have, uh, I don't know what we did, but we managed to get Ned Friedman, CEO of GitHub, to do the, uh, the first keynote. Uh, Stephanie Shiraz from Red Hat is going to be the next keynote, and then we're going to break up in these tracks where these four different uh, four different tracks are going to be uh, recorded. Um, there are all times in there, and some of the names you already mentioned. We have Scott Hanselman, we've got Ulrich Homan, we, uh, we have Gabe Mondroy, we have uh, Brandon Burns, uh, we have John Gossman, who's part of the Linux Foundation. So. Uh, and from the partner side, we also have a great lineup. Uh, we've got 10 open source partners also contributing. We have even CEOs uh, um, uh, that are promoting the event on our behalf. So this is going to be massive. So if you have the possibility, please tune in the 16th of June. Uh, I think the uh, I think it's going to be aka.ms slash msvoss. So Microsoft op uh, Virtual Open Source Summit. You can register over there. If you want to know the link, also let me know. And if it's after the dates, stay tuned to find the next one. No, thank you very much for sharing that. And again, I, like just by list listing all the speakers and like the, the 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 companies who are involved in that, I was like, hey, we need to spend much more time talking about this. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time in this video, so I really want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all the listeners here, um, and I really hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.